Good day. Hello. How are you? Today we are going to talk about some properties of probability. So without further ado, let's get started. <clears throat> so what are the basic properties of probability? Previously, we talked about probability or chance of something happening, an event happening. Probability is basically the chance or likelihood of something happening. So what are the, the properties of probability? The first one says that the lowest value of probability is zero and the highest value is one. So you cannot go below zero, which will make negative probability. That is not possible. Remember that that is not possible. The other end is the highest value of probability is one or hundred percent. Like if I say, what is the probability of raining tomorrow? I know from the weather forecast, it is zero. It is not going to happen. On the other hand, what is the probability of being sunny? And I know again from weather forecast, it is 100% chance it will be sunny. So that value is one. Lowest value is zero, highest value is one. In case you have just logged in, this is, uh, uh, you know, Dr. Nandy giving a lecture on basic properties of probability in my channel. I have, uh, you know, accumulated this presentations of different kinds. Please stay subscribe to my channel and review these uh, presentations. It may help you out. I appreciate the fact that you're taking the time to watch my video. Please do not quit halfway. Please stick with me till the end of this program, until the end of this program. I really appreciate that. Okay, so that was the first property. The second property, probability of the sample space, remember the sample space consists of different events, such as when you flip a coin, the sample space consists of head and tail. What the second item is saying, that probability of all events in the sample space, some of those probabilities is equal to one. Such as when you flip a coin, probability of head plus probability of tail is equal to one. The third property, if two events E and F are mutually exclusive. Now, if you get thrown away, what is mutually exclusive? Think of it. Mutually exclusive means they do not include each other. That means they are not happening at the same time. Then probability of E or F is probability of E plus probability of F. What does it really mean? So we do not know whether E will happen or F will happen, but we know they will not happen at the same time. In that case, when we are doing probability of E or F, it has to be some of the two probabilities, probability of event E plus probability of event F. Okay, for property number four, for any event E, probability of E plus probability of not E equal to one. And it follows from this definition, therefore, that probability of not E is 1 minus probability of E. You get confused here? Well, I'll try to explain in an easy term. So think about E is head. E, you're flipping a coin, E is the event that you get head face up. So probability of head and what is probability of not E is tail. We already know probability of head plus probability of tail is equal to 1 from property number two. So probability of head plus probability of tail is equal to one. Now, if you subtract probability of head on both sides of equation, probability of head plus probability of tail is equal to one, subtract probability of head on both sides. So you get probability of tail is equal to one minus probability of head. One minus probability of head is probability of tail. Or in other words, Probability of not head is one minus probability of head. A probability of not E, which is complement of E, 
or opposite of e is equal to 1 or minus probability of e. This is called the complement rule of probability of events. Any question? Please shoot me a question. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. So how do we calculate when there are equal chances of different events happening? Consider a chance experiment that can result in any one of the n possible outcomes. <clears throat> Denote the corresponding simple events by O1, O2, and O3. If these simple events are likely to occur, then probability of O1 is 1 over n, probability of O2 is 1 over n. What is a good example of that? Again, think of flipping a coin. There are two faces, head and tail face. And when you flip it, or you toss it a coin, it is equally likely that the head face will land face up or the tail face will land face up. So probability of head is 1 divided by n in this case is number of faces in the coin which is 2. So probability of head is 1 out of 2 and probability of tail is also 1 out of 2. In algebra when we are talking about more than two events we represent it that probability for any event E, number 2, is equal to probability of, I mean, comma probability of E is equal to number of seven simple events in E divided by N. So, suppose it is probability of head, number of simple events in head, uh, in E, E is my head, probability of head, there's only one head on one face of the coin. So, in the numerator, in the top of that expression, we get 1, number of simple events in E is 1 face, divided by N, capital N, 2 faces, 2. So probability of head is 1 out of 2. These are equally likely chances of happening, either a head face up or a tail face up. Okay. Suppose E and F are mutually exclusive. Again, mutually exclusive means they are not going to happen at the same time. So probability of E or F, we already came across this in algebra that is written as probability E union. Remember, union is or. Either E can happen or F can happen. Is We do not know which one is definitely happening. So we add the probabilities up. Is probability of E plus probability of F. This property of probability is known as the addition rule for mutually exclusive. Again, they are not happening at the same time. What is this big thing at the middle of the slide? They're expressing the same equation for more than two events. So probability of E1 or E2 or E or dash 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 up to En, you add up the probabilities because these are mutually exclusive events. Any of them can happen. Example for car choices. A large auto dealer center sells cars made by several different manufacturers. Three of the uh, three of these uh, Japanese manufacturers are Honda, Nissan and Toyota. Consider a chance experiment that consists of observing the make and model of the next car purchased at this auto center. The outcomes in the sample space would then be simple events like Nissan Altima and Toyota Prius. Let's define the events E1, E2 and E3 by E1 equal to Honda, E2 equal to Nissan and E3 equal to Toyota. E1 is not a simple event but there is more than one model Honda. Suppose the probabilities of these three events have been estimated empirically. You would ask me what is the meaning of the word empirically. Empirically means observation. What the value has been observed over a large number of such experiments. That probability person will, let me go back. E1 is, remember Honda is 0.25. Probability of E2 is Nissan is 0.18. And probability of E3 is 0.14. Okay. So suppose we want to find out what is the probability of E1, union E2, union E3. Remember union is or, so probability of Honda or Nissan 
or Toyota because these are mutually exclusive. Why mutually exclusive, you ask me? Because if you think of it, if a person buys a Honda, he or she is not going to buy a Nissan or he or she is going to buy a Toyota. So these are mutually exclusive. So in case you are finding the union, you got to add the individual probabilities which they do and it come out as 0.57. The probability that the next car is not made by any of these three manufacturers. That's the opposite event of E1 or E2 or E3. Remember, E1 is Honda, E2 is Nissan, E3 is Toyota. And we want the probability of the event where none of these manufacturers' car is purchased. That is the opposite event. So using the complement rule, it will be 1 minus P E1, E2, E3, uh, E1, union E2, union E3. Okay, so 1 minus 0.5. So remember, not any of these three manufacturers means it is the complement or opposite. And we use the complement rule, which says probability of not A is equal to 1 minus probability of A. Okay, so that is it. The properties, the main properties that we have learned is the lowest value of probability is 0, highest value is 1. If it is 0, the event is not going to happen. If the probability of an event is 1, definitely it's going to happen. The other important rule is probability of mutually exclusive events. E1 or E2, E2 is because they're mutually exclusive, they're not happening at the same time. We do not know which one is going to happen. So for union, we add the individual probabilities. The other important rule that we learned is the law of complement events. So probability of not A means complement of A or opposite of A is equal to 1 minus probability of A. Very important, these three rules. So I stop here today. If you have any question or comment, just write me a note and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate it. It motivates me to produce more videos for, just for you. And please also let me know where you are watching my video from. If you like this video, share with your friends. And please subscribe to my channel by hitting the red subscribe button. And please do not forget to click on the bell button, which is the notify button. Every time I upload a new video, you'll be notified. And please do not forget to watch me tomorrow when I'll be back with another interesting video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Have a nice day. See you tomorrow.